Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be talking about how to run a retrospective in Confluence. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like to get value out of this video, as that really does help the channel grow. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. But before we get started with today's video, I got two quick announcements to make. One, as you can see, I have some t-shirts, so check out the link in the description below. Get one, I have a few different designs, get one of each, get one for your coworkers, get one for your teammates, get one for everybody you know, help support the channel. And number two, I also now have paid trainings. So if you're interested in that, check out the description below and you will get all the information you need on my paid trainings. All right, with that said, let's jump into Confluent. <laughs> All right, so today we're gonna to be inside of Confluence. Specifically, we're gonna be teaching you and walking through how to run a retrospective inside of Confluence. When you're running retrospectives, you have pretty much any method that you wanna use. I personally prefer being in person because that's the way I feel like I built the greatest camaraderie with my team. But in a post-COVID world, where obviously many of us are still working from home, using Confluence is a great tool, it's a great technique to running a successful retrospective. And even if you do your retrospective in person, you can still leverage Confluence to take your notes and keep just a paper trail of all your meeting minutes just for reference in the future. Let's go into Confluence and see what this looks like. So within Confluence, I don't know if you knew this, but you actually don't have to jump straight into a blank canvas. Confluence has a template already created for you. And I can click on templates here, and if I, Type in retrospective, I'm obviously already on there, but if you just don't have anything here, you can basically click this little search bar and then type in retrospective and it's gonna find you two different retrospectives. You do not wanna use the 4LS retrospective, that's for something else. We're specifically interested in the retrospective that is with the green icon that is for software development and IT. So all you gotta do is use this one. This will create a blank page for you and now we're inside the retrospective page. You can close out this template, we won't need that. That way you have full screen for your page. Now give this a title. Typically I just name it the day of the retrospective, but you can really name it whatever you want. So this is my retro. Down here, these are all built in. So this is part of the template. This isn't anything that I created special for this. If you are in Confluence Cloud and you go to your Confluence, you will see these exact same page configurations. So. At the top, we have a page properties with the date. And so you can come in here, click inside of it. And once you click in there, you can just double slash slash for your date. And then you can put today's date, whatever you want to do there. If you have special names for your teams, if you're creative and you have that flair in your team, go ahead and put your team, team awesome is what I'll call mine. And then this is pretty important. When you notify or when you mention somebody inside of Confluence by doing at and their name, Confluence, when I hit publish on this page, is going to send an email to everybody in your team. Now this is a pretty cool little feature because everybody in your team is probably gonna want to refer back to what was discussed or any actions that were taken. And so by mentioning folks, when you're done with your retrospective, it's automatically just gonna email out the, the page so that people can always go back and reference it and check and see if anything of importance was said that they need to refer back to. So make sure that for every person in your meeting, that is present in your retrospective, you're tagging them so that they can get that notification later. I won't mention anybody, because it's just a team of me, because if I just put me, then it's me. Now, this is where things get interesting. These last two sections, the retrospective and the action items, this is where the magic happens. So by default, Confluence has this start, stop, keep doing. I don't like it. It's not the one that I use personally, but it's effective. You talk about things that you should start doing as a team, things that you should stop doing as a team, and things that you should keep doing as a team. And keep in mind that the retrospective is designed to be a ceremony where you're reflecting on the process. You want to keep in mind of where you've been, what went well, what didn't go well, and what could be improved, or start, stop, keep doing. And these are important conversations to have because your team needs to be vulnerable. Your team needs to be based on trust as well. And when you have these very, very important conversations, when you talk about the hard things, when you talk about roadblocks that popped up or folks that made, that gave you bottlenecks or, or challenges that you face as a team or even as an individual, it's important to capture that information in your retrospective 
so that as a team you can grow so that as a team you can overcome these obstacles and these challenges and you get stronger and stronger as a team now i will say that to run a successful retrospective not just a retrospective not just to run one but to run a successful one to really create a high performance team you need a strong scrum master you need a strong leader somebody with empathy somebody with high emotional intelligence because the retrospective can very easily turn into a blame game when you don't run it correctly folks will make this meeting a you it's we didn't we failed because of you it's your fault that we did this and you want to cut that right away because the second that somebody feels like they're blamed or threatened or something like that they're going to close up for the rest of the retrospective and if not all future retrospectives and that is not healthy for the team so make sure you have a very strong leader in place here to help manage these retrospectives and my last comment that i'll make about the retrospective is this is a place for the team this is a place this is a safe place for your scrum team so at a minimum or at a maximum you should have the scrum team present and the scrum master product owner an argument can be made but no managers nobody that has any direct authority or influence over your performance over your pay your bonuses none of that because any of those folks that do have that level of influence will overshadow and cause the team to not really discuss their issues and if they just keep piling up those issues that they're having it's not going to be good for anybody so make sure that those decision makers are not present so that your team can put their guard down be vulnerable and actually discuss their problems. All right, so back to conflict. Okay, so since we do have the start, stop, keep doing, you don't have to use this. You actually have two strategies here. You can either A, change it, right? I can change this to whatever I want to be, uh, what went well. And then when I publish it, obviously it's gonna be saved. But going forward, I should not refer to the template again, the way I started this video out, because that template is always gonna default back to start, stop, keep doing. What you have as an option is once you make your Confluence page here, at the end of the next sprint, all you gotta do is go back to this Confluence page, this specific retrospective, make a copy of this one, update all the information. Just be careful that you update all the information because you don't wanna linger dates and participants and stuff from the previous one. So you wanna make sure you clear it out. And if that's too much of a hassle, then as long as you have the right permissions, you can go into the Confluence and edit the blueprint, AKA the template, so that it has whatever your team actually uses. Now, start, stop, keep doing, what went well, what didn't go well, what could be improved. I personally like what made us mad, what made us glad, what made us sad. So get creative, whatever your team is using, feel free to use it here because it's gonna be really, really cool. And the final part about this template is the action items. When you are talking amongst yourselves as a team, naturally, there's going to be a discussion about things that need to be changed and someone is going to have the action to go make that change happen. Scrum Masters, your responsibility here is to ensure that those actions are taken care of during that two week period of the next sprint. What you should avoid at all costs is coming to the next retrospective with all the last retrospective actions still unresolved. If that becomes a pattern where you all speak freely you identify things that need to change, and then you come to the next retrospective and nothing has changed, and then you come to the next retrospective after that and nothing has changed even then, then your team will realize that after a couple of these that no action is ever gonna be taken and what's the point of even speaking up because they know status quo is gonna be status quo. So if you wanna avoid that, as a Scrum Master, make sure you're following up on these actions. Make sure you're scheduling the meetings, having the hard conversations, talking to the right managers, talking to the right executives if you have to, to ensure that these actions are taken care of. But also do make sure that the actions have merit. Sometimes they're just complaints and sometimes they don't have merit, but at least follow up, follow up and get some data because it's easier to tell somebody, hey, I discussed with so-and-so manager and this is the reasons why this is not gonna be possible. But now we have facts and data. Now we can basically address that, hey, I at least followed up and this is why we're not gonna be able to pursue this. Or maybe you have a compromise. We won't be able to do it like this, but after some discussions, maybe we can do this other alternative. So in any case, it's always essential that you follow up with these actions because if you don't, this will again demoralize your team and cause them to not want to contribute. So that's pretty much it for the retrospective. This is really, really easy. All you gotta do when you're done with your retrospective is hit the publish page and then that retrospective will be published. And that's it. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like, as that really does help out this channel. And if you made it this far and you're still not subscribed, 
make sure you smash that subscribe button down below because it is absolutely free for you and it really does help out the channel. And finally, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if you just want to share how you run your retrospective, let me know in the comment section below. And finally, don't forget to check out the links below so that you can get your t-shirt. Get one for everybody that is present in your retrospective and show that team camaraderie. Show your it's not a bug, it's a feature. Because I guarantee you, this topic is going to come up in your retrospectives. Something's going to go wrong and someone's going to say, that's not a bug, that's a feature. So make sure you have and you're sporting your it's not a bug, it's a t-shirt. Available in the link description below. Bye. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.